So, if you want to decrease your drag, we actually have results. So previously I did a video on whether downforce works amongst different aero devices, but one thing that I wanted to always check out was whether it actually reduced things like, say, lift or drag. So here we can see that the drag is 0.338 and the lift is 0.035 and 0.035 on the rear. And we're going to do a few different variations and give it a bit of a test. So here we've created ourselves a very generic four cylinder. It doesn't really particularly matter. Let's give it a little bit of a listen. Follows all rules of having like a catalytic converter and everything, just because. Going to select the normal sedan body. We're going to make this transverse front wheel drive. We'll go manual for the direct connection to the actual engine to wheels. A five speed, because this is a, just a generic 2012. We'll make this a little bit sporty, so it'll have a viscous LSD. Radial, medium compound. And I want to try another thing. We are going to have no under tray here and we're going to have no brake airflow. Then we're going to have one with brake airflow that's maximum. And we have our drivability max out at 99.9%. Let's uh, maybe make this a little bit pretty at least. Even if the body model year is like 1985 and we're trying to make it in 2012. Ugh, it's hideous, but, well, whatever, who cares? It's gonna be the... no... arrow. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do brake airflow. So that's number two, BAF, brake airflow. And we're gonna see if this creates more drag. Yeah, I, f I forgot to change this. I just kind of went ahead with it. Now, we are going to do the very next thing, which is fully clad. We're going to see if that reduces drag. The 3FC for version 3, fully clad. Then, downforce, but we're not going to add any downforce because that's not what we're trying to do. And this will be for under downforce. So it's no real downforce, it's just the downforce slider. Now on to actually adding body parts. So we're going to go with the thing which should do the most, which would be one of these, one of these, or one of these. But because I need no calling in the back, we're just going to go with one of these, and these should really work. Rear Diffuser, RDF. I wonder if this only works in collaboration with undercladding. I don't know. We will put two of them together and we'll see if that works. So the undercladding along with this, which should work in conjunction to reduce drag. So this is just going to add on to the last one, FC for fully clad. Now we're adding a front lip work. We're going to grab one of these. 6FL for 6 front lip. And since we're not going for downforce, but we are going for drag, we're going to do this to reduce the lift to zero. Unfortunately, it doesn't get us all the way there, but it does get us to about minus 15 compared to what it normally would be, which would be down here at about minus 70. And the final party piece. Oh dear. This will be 7S for spoiler. Back to aerodynamics, get rid of that. And we're going to change the rear wing to give us zero lift. So here we have the cars lined up, but instead of driving this time, we're going to have the air run past the car, which is basically the same thing. And we are just going to measure how much the weight difference changes. So it starts at 402 at the front and 330 on the rear and we're going to put this up to about 200 kilometers an hour at 205 kilometers an hour we now see that we have 407 on the front and 333 on the rear so it seems that automation's lift calculations do not come into play here because we seem to have put on five kilos on the front and three kilos on the rear and here we have brake airflow with 406 and 334. So we have one less on the rear and one more on the front, which is very peculiar. I, it seems very weird. The fully clad has another 406 and 335. I did, however, forget to remove the brake airflow. So really all it's done is added one to the rear. So here we have the under tray downforce with no downforce set 
giving us 407 on the front, which with the brake airflow is one extra kilogram. And on the rear, 335, which is only an extra one kilogram on the rear. So overall, we're one kilogram more both, way, both ways around. Now, this is the one that I had the most hopes for, since this is the rear diffuser, and its job is to reduce drag and to get it out the back, whilst adding a little bit of downforce, but it doesn't need to add downforce. Unfortunately, it looks as if it's had absolutely no effect on lift. And here we have it in combination with the uh, undercladding. And no such luck. So that changes nothing. The front lip does actually seem to be adding an extra kilogram on the front, but no extra on the rear. Though it does seem uneven, so something here has gone awry. Then we have just the good old spoiler. And it seems to be sitting at actually less weight on the rear, but uneven. Now this next one is going to be a little bit tricky. So I have to pull, and I'm gonna pull from right about here, I think. We're going to increase the speed. I really don't know how I'm gonna do this one. We're gonna to go to about 500 kilometers an hour to just get the extremes of the wind. Okay. This has been problematic to say the least to try to get a proper test done here. And I'm not sure still if I'm even going to be able to do this. <sighs> this is seemingly going to take quite a while. So what we have done, we have set up anchor points for every single one of these and we're just going to wait to see where they equalize and hopefully that will give us a very good estimation of which one has more drag. Yeah, I think because this one was a little bit out of alignment maybe, and the rest were in alignment. Oh dear. Okay, we've done it again, but this time with just a little bit better lining up of the nodes with directly in front of them. And because it is slightly off center, it will actually cause a little bit of an issue with them wanting to pull sideways like this. But I suppose the less drag you have, the better this is going to be. Now I'm just going to go out here and say that this one, yes, was slightly out of alignment for the rest and I just didn't want to respawn every single car just to make sure that they're all in line and oh, fuck, screw this car, whatever. Just ignore this one, the rest of these are the ones that matter. Okay, I think we are at a crawling pace now and we've gotten about as good as we got. I would say that probably this is all within margin of error. This is all just a little too hard to be able to tell the difference between them. Clearly, however, there is a problem here with number five is rear diffuser and rear diffuser with cladding is better. There's fully cladding. So fully cladding is this one and it seems that fully cladding and fully cladding with diffuser are good, but diffuser without cladding is bad. The rest of them do fairly well apart from nothing but just break airflow. This time we've got the drag coefficient showing here. And it really actually is showing us important information. You can see here we've got almost an entire block here difference, but he's only a little bit further ahead. So yes, actually there is extra drag from this car. And just to clarify and show the proof that is with the rear diffuser, does give extra drag. Do any of these give less drag? It seems that these two give less drag and they are fully clad and underside downforce. So if you want to decrease your drag, we actually have results. It really does seem that the rear lip actually adds a lot and the front lip doesn't seem to add a lot at all. So we have actually given some proof to some things and I will now Never use the rear diffuser ever again. That is actually quite a bit of a surprise here. As you can see, the one next to it is a little bit like one and a half or one and a quarter smaller tiles back. Whereas here we're getting one block and three quarters of a tile back. So clearly this one is the worst. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this weird video. I suppose now that we have the results, we can actually go do a quick little video. So we're gonna take number three, fully clad. 
Well, since we know that number three fully clad is the best of the bunch, kinda, really, then we're gonna take this one out for a bit of a spin. And just see- oh wait, hold on. Alright, let's do that without the power graph this time, blocking up a large portion of the screen and showing that I haven't converted this one to electric yet. <laughs> and coming up to here, break in, turn in, oh the break in and the turn in are fairly good. It's fairly well balanced, I didn't really perfect this car for actually driving on the road, the brakes may not be perfect, all that kind of stuff. But it has ABS so that's fine, I think halfway through I did actually change the brake sizes. So that may have influenced the results just a smidgen, but I really don't think it would have because I doubt that there's drag calculated off of the size of the brake discs. Maybe a little bit of extra weight, but really you're only looking at about two kilos and that's within margin of error anyway. And you would have seen it as a broad half of the cars were showing different results. Oh, hey, look at that. Lovely front wheel drive drift there going around the... Uh, Bowl? What, what do you call those? Banked corners? Banked corner is a little too clinical. I don't like the. I don't like calling them a banked corner, but I suppose that is really the technical term. I'll just call it a bowl. A bowl sounds pretty good. The top speed back here seems to be fairly decent, getting about 180 in the F, <laughs> the aero, and 188. We're getting a little bit of weird uh, tail happiness there. Probably generating a little too much lift. <laughs> oh, I know I'm funny, aren't I? Oh, Sugoi. You know what, we might actually turn the wheel weight uh, measuring on so we can actually tell whether this thing is uh, actually generating lift through corners because that didn't actually feel like lift because... I, 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 you know what, actually I don't know how to measure that. That's beyond my scope of understanding. And here we go. Our times are not great. We've already reached 150. We're basically at two minutes now, and we have a fair portion of the track left to go. And I've not done particularly bad on this track. We've taken corners at a decent rate. The brakes on this are actually really good. I'm actually surprised for just kind of chucking them together. They are really showing me up here, making me think that I'm... Uh, uh, I, yeah, whatever, you get the idea. I would give this car like a 4 out of 10. And here we come up to the last corner, go around, floor it down to the back street. Come on, fang it, bruh, fang it, fang it. Oh, we're getting 100. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, here we go at 246. Thought I would just finish this video off with a little bit of something. You know, scruff. There we go, I want to see this crash. Wow, that was actually quite pathetic. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time. Bye!